and welcome to Midweek Holy Communion on what is looking like a really nice sunny morning out there today. So if you're heading out for some daily exercise, you're going to have it really nice. I hope you're keeping well and that your family and friends are well too. Uh, congratulations to those of you that have received your vaccination. And if you are <coughs> still waiting to be called, just be patient. I'm sure it will happen before too long. Uh, so, let's get on with our short service this morning, shall we? We meet in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. A moment of quiet before we confess our sins to God. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father but we have turned aside from your way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your world is a light on our path, <clears throat> but we have walked in the darkness of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us to everlasting life, but we have not listened to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And now today's Gospel reading, <clears throat> which comes from the Gospel of St Mark, chapter 3, verses 7 to 12. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed with his disciples to the lake, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him. Hearing all that he was doing, they came to him in great numbers, from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, from beyond the Jordan, and the region around Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him. For he had cured many, so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, we're only in the third chapter of St Mark here, and this is quite early on in Jesus' ministry. And he is still being besieged by enormous crowds. They're coming from all over the place to hear him, to be healed of their diseases, to have evil spirits cast out, to listen to his teaching. And, you know, it's becoming a big problem. So much so that there's really what we would call today a health and safety risk. And it looks like Jesus kind of does uh, a risk assessment and decides that he should remain safe and that the crowd should remain safe as well. It's best that he has a boat ready whenever he speaks to these large crowds so that he can just put out a little bit from the shore and speak to them from the boat. So he's protected from being crushed and the crowd are protected as well. But as time went on, of course... Uh, Jesus' teaching changed a bit in its emphasis and he began to come out with stuff that was really a lot more challenging. Things like you know, loving and forgiving your enemies and uh, taking up your cross daily and following him. Or things like if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. And some really hard stuff like that. And the crowds began to die down. They began to thin out considerably uh, as time went on. But for the moment, in this chapter, chapter 3, the crowds are still besieging him. And, you know, they do that because they know that wherever Jesus is, some exciting things are happening. People are being healed, people are having evil spirits cast out, uh, 
you know, it's an exciting place to be and uh, great things are happening. And I suppose really it's kind of the same today, maybe not in such a, a dramatic way as was happening then, but where Jesus is, wonderful things happen, amazing things can happen. And, you know, uh, if we have Jesus in our lives, if we are living for him, if Jesus is, is with us in our church, in our fellowship, then we can expect great things to happen. We can expect to, to know joy. We can expect to know peace. We can expect to be healed emotionally and physically and spiritually. We can expect uh, to be freed from our fears and anxieties. And all these kinds of wonderful things can happen when we are, when we are near Jesus, when he's around us and when we are with him. And so I suppose this morning, as we are still in the grip of this global pandemic, uh, you know, if you're like me, I expect you're feeling a little bit, you know, fed up with it all, as if you haven't really got much, uh, much time for it anymore. It's all becoming such a, a difficult thing to experience. And we're wondering when it's all going to be over. Well, when we're around Jesus, when Jesus is with us, we can know joy. We can know peace. We can know a freedom from fear. And we can know that he is def very, very definitely with us. And so if you're feeling at the end of your resources this morning and you've got nothing much left to give and this pandemic has really taken it all out of you and you've had absolutely enough, then just come to Jesus. Remember that he is with you. He is, he is he's living inside you. And you will know the strength that you need to live one day at a time until this whole business is over. Amen. So we now move on to a brief statement of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we come to our prayers. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we begin our prayers this morning, as we so often have done, with praying for all those who are suffering as a result of the pandemic. For those who are ill, at home, some seriously ill in hospital. We pray for all those who work for the NHS, who are tired, exhausted at the end of themselves. We pray for all those who work in care homes. We pray for the rollout of the vaccination programme, that it would go smoothly and swiftly. We pray for the bereaved, for those who have lost loved ones as a result of this virus. We continue to pray for our Prime Minister and the government as they make difficult decisions. And for all those other people affected in any way by the pandemic, for parents who are homeschooling and perhaps feeling a little inadequate for the task, for people whose livelihoods and jobs are at risk, and for all who as a result of this pandemic are feeling tired and at the end of their own resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this morning for the new President of the United States, Joe Biden, and for his government, we pray for strength and wisdom for him as he begins the task of leading that uh, country into the next phase of its life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we know that uh, today there are some people in uh, parts of northern England who are very severely affected by flooding or may feel they are at risk of being affected by flooding and we pray for them and for all the emergency services and local councils who are trying to alleviate the problem. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. And we pray for all those we know who are in any kind of need. Those in, who are ill at home or in hospital, those who are recently bereaved, those who face a difficult circumstance in their life at the moment. And we bring before God to our own personal requests at this time. A moment of silence for us to do that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the virtual piece, which as usual we will do, but uh, you'll just have to uh, say the words of the piece uh, and assume other people are hearing you at the same time as we normally do. So our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So now we move on to our Eucharistic prayer. If you'd like to join in with the responses as and when appropriate. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary to be the living bread, in whom all hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a life stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation, May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with the Virgin Mary, St. Lawrence and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour to which you have called us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. 
Amen. Rejoicing in God's presence with us, let us pray as our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. So as usual, I will now take uh, the bread and the wine on behalf of you all. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now the final prayer and blessing. Christ, the Son of God, Perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me for this short service of Midweek Holy Communion. I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.